Good morning, 9th standard. Let's continue with the remaining questions of exercise 13.8 today. We have done five questions. Let us take up question number six. A hemispherical tank is made up of an iron sheet, one centimeter thick. If the inner radius is one meters, then find the volume of the iron used to make the tank. So this is what we have, a hemispherical tank. It has been made up of iron sheet and the thickness of the iron sheet is one centimeters. Along with this, the inner radius. The inner radius is given to be one meters. So we have been given inner radius inner radius will be represented by small r lowercase r it is 1 meters thickness of sheet is 1 centimeters using these two we can find out the outer radius the outer radius will be the inner radius plus the thickness but the units are different here so you will have to convert while doing this question I want you to refer to question number 2 and question number 7 of exercise 13.6 in those questions also you were given an object it was cylindrical in shape you had to find out the volume of the material used to make that cylindrical object here the object is hemispherical in shape the concept will be same to find out the volume of the material used in this tank we are considering two hemispheres one which is appearing on the outer side and one which appears on the inside subtracting the two volumes you will get the volume of the material used to make that tank since it's not indicated that you have to calculate the volume in cubic meters or cubic centimeters it will be your choice I'm going to calculate the answer in cubic centimeters and convert at the end if I wish to so let us find out the outer radius outer radius will be represented by capital R and this is given by the inner radius plus thickness if you remember if you have two concentric circles the radius of the smaller circle is represented by R and the radius of the bigger circle is represented by capital R the difference between these two is the thickness so if you want to obtain capital R you will add small r with the thickness this will be 1 meters plus 1 centimeters 1 meter is 100 centimeters so this will be 101 centimeters now to find out the volume of iron used volume of iron used will be given by volume of outer hemisphere minus volume of inner hemisphere so the volume of outer hemisphere for a hemisphere the formula is 2 by 3 pi r cube so if it is the outer hemisphere I'll be using the outer radius so capital R cube minus for the inner hemisphere I'll be using small r cube now using the values of the radii let's solve and before I substitute I'm going to take the common factor so this is what I will have 2 by 3 pi is common r cube minus small r cube let's use the values so this will be 101 cube minus 100 cube 
if it had been square identity a square minus b square i would have used identity for simplification i'm not using the identity for uh, the cube here i'm going to simplify the cubes and then solve so 2 into 22 by 3 into 7 into the cube for 101 and the cube for 100 subtracting the two so if this can be simplified you can simplify or express your answer in the form of a fraction and that's what I'm going to do multiplying my numerators the denominator is 21 you can leave the answer as such or you can divide and obtain the answer in decimal number if you divide this you could leave the answer here as such it doesn't matter it's completely fine the volume of the iron used will be in centimeter cube so that's your answer in case you change it to a decimal number you get this as your answer approximately and if you want to change it to meter cube you will divide it by 10 lakh because 1 meter equals to 100 centimeters so 1 meter cube will be equal to 100 centimeter cube so this means 1 meter cube equals to 10 lakh centimeter cube so if you want to change centimeter cube to meter cube you will divide by 10 lakh so if we wanted to convert this would be the answer obtained in cubic centimeters divided by 10 lakh and from here the answer becomes 7. Now let us look at question number 7. Find the volume of a sphere whose surface area is 154 cm square. There was a question just like this in the exercise where we discussed surface area of sphere. You have to find out the radius when surface area was given. Now you have to find out the volume. You have been given the surface area, you have to find out the volume. To find out the volume of a sphere, you need the radius of the sphere. But the radius of the sphere is not given. Instead, you have been given the surface area of sphere. So using the surface area of sphere, you'll find out the radius of sphere. And then apply the formula for the volume of sphere. In case of a sphere now, the surface area is given. So it doesn't matter. In case of a sphere, total surface area and curved surface area are both same. So surface area of sphere irrespective of it being total or curved because they are the same the formula is same 4 pi r square it is equal to 154 use this equation find r and then apply the formula for volume of sphere using pi as 22 by 7 simplifying transposing the constants to the other side So r square is 49 by 4, r equals to square root of 49 by 4 equals to 7 by 2 centimeters. Now using the radius we can find out the volume, A volume of sphere equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube. Substitute the values again, r cube means 7 by 2 cubed. So I have written in expanded form. Again, simplifying your answer, this could be cancelled with 11, sorry, 2. So, 539 by 3 centimeter cube. Again, you can leave the answer in the form of a fraction. It's completely fine. The next question that we have is question number 8. A dome of a building is in the form of a hemisphere. You could think of Taj Mahal. 
the dome is in the shape of a hemisphere from inside it was whitewashed at the cost of 498 rupees 96 paise this is the total cost of whitewashing the cost of whitewashing per unit of area per meter square is 2 rupees you have to find out the inner surface area of the dome this is the area which has been whitewashed and you have to find out the volume of air inside the dome so let's work out the parts one by one you have been given the total cost of whitewashing so I'm just noting down what's given to me this is the total cost of whitewashing the hemispherical dome be very careful about the shape given the formula will depend on that so this is given as 498 rupees 96 paise and you have been given the cost of whitewashing 1 meter square this is 2 rupees so using the total cost and the cost of whitewashing 1 meter square you can find out the area whitewashed so area whitewashed will be given by total cost over cost per unit area so this is the total cost 498.96 rupees over 2 so from here you will get the area whitewashed and the area will be in meter square you could also use the concept of direct and inverse proportions by making a table so you have area and you have cost so for 1 meter square the cost is 2 rupees so how much area has been painted for 498 rupees 96 paise if you take this quantity as x you can solve to find out x more the cost more will be area this is direct proportion so you will have 1 by 2 equals to x by 498.96 the ratio will be same because it's a direct proportion solving from here you will get the same expression so on cross multiplication you get 498.96 divided by 2 so this is what I have written so either you could use this or you can directly apply this formula to find out the area whitewashed so from here the area comes out to be 249.48 meter square the units of area are meter square this is the answer for the first part we have calculated area whitewashed as 249.48 meter square this means the area this is the curved surface area of dome is equal to 249.48 meter square because the dome was painted from the inside it's indicated in the question the inner side of the dome was whitewashed the inner side of the dome will be the curved surface so when you calculate the area whitewashed you actually calculate the inner surface area the inner surface area is the inner curved surface area of the dome and since the dome is hemispherical in shape the area is given by 2 by sorry it's given by 2 pi r square the value for this is as calculated by you in the first part now the purpose of doing this is for the second part you have to find out the volume of air inside the dome the volume of air inside the dome will be given by the volume of the dome itself how much space is inside that dome and to find out the space inside a dome you have to find out the volume of the dome to find out the volume of the dome you require the radius of the dome which is not given 
so we will be using the answer from the first part to find out the radius using the radius obtained from here we will be solving the second part that's why we are writing this now let us solve for r square then find out r from there r square equals to i am changing it to a decimal i am changing this decimal number into a fraction transposing the values simplifying applying divisibility rules this is divisible by 11 so again I can cancel this by 2 so r square comes out to be 567 into 7 over 100 now r will be equal to square root of this value now if you can remember the way we calculated square root in Heron's formula I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to factorize 567 okay so I've got 81 into 7 into 7 over 100 so 7 forms a pair this comes out of the root 81 under the square root this will give me 9 square root of 100 will be 10 so r will be equal to 63 by 10 so r will be equal to 6.3 meters using this radius we will solve the second part the second part is volume of air inside the dome the volume of air present inside the dome depends on the space available inside the dome and the space inside an object is given by the volume of that object so the volume for the dome will be equal to 2 by 3 pi r cube because the dome is hemispherical in shape using the values of pi and the radius we obtained in the previous part using the inner curved surface area let's simplify changing 6.3 into a fraction and expanding the cube and then the simplification so this is 44 into 3 into 63 into 63 over 1000 I'm going to multiply my numerator and then use thousand to put the point back so the numerator on multiplication gives me 5,23,908 in the denominator it is 1000 from here the answer comes out to be 523.908 meter cube so this is the volume of air inside the dome let us look at question number 9th now 27 solid iron spheres each of radius r and surface area s are melted to form a sphere with surface area s dash find first radius r dash of the new sphere second the ratio of s and s dash before I discuss this question with you, I would like you to refer to question number 8 of exercise 13.5. In that question, I have discussed with you what happens when a solid object is recast to form new solids. And there are two cases where one solid is recast to form multiple new solids or multiple solids are combined together to form a new solid in either of the cases the change occurs in the volume if you are combining the solids the volume get combined if you are creating multiple solids from one solid then the volume of the bigger solid gets divided into the volumes for the smaller solids obtained 
in this question 27 solid spheres are being combined to form a single sphere so the change happens to their volume as well what will happen the volume of those 27 spheres combined will give you the volume of the new sphere this is the first thing you want to keep in mind here the second thing you want to keep in mind here is you have not been given the numerical values for the radius they are using variables for the same so you will be working with variables as well the same question could be asked by giving you numerical values in place of the radius the surface area has been represented by capital s and for the new sphere the same representations have been taken by a simple differentiation of dash so radius for the solid spheres 27 solid spheres that's r for the new sphere it's r dash the surface area of the solid spheres is s whereas the surface area of the new sphere is s dash just for you to remember you can write down a note 27 solid spheres are melted and used to form a single sphere so this means the volume of 27 spheres will be equal to the volume of new sphere so this is the main concept we will be using in this question let us begin by calculating the volume of one sphere and then from there we will obtain the volume of 27 spheres and from there we will find out the volume of the new sphere so our answer begins from here we have radius of one solid iron sphere equals to r we don't have the value we just have the variable so let it be as such we'll be using r therefore volume of one solid iron sphere will be 4 by 3 pi now here we use the radius so i have deliberately written this the formula is this 4 by 3 pi radius cube the radius is represented by r so the answer for the volume of one iron sphere will be equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube so from here i can obtain the volume of 27 solid iron spheres so if the volume of one is this we have to find for 27 i'll multiply the answer by 27 so from here this comes out to be 36 pi r cube we have volume of 27 solid iron spheres as 36 pi r cube let's mark this result as important because we'll be using it later on so i've marked it with a star now i'm moving on to the volume of the bigger sphere because i want to use what i had written in the note that the volume of these 27 spheres is same as the volume of the new sphere so i would like to calculate the second value the volume of the iron sphere the big iron sphere the second thing we have is radius of new sphere this is r dash again we have a variable we do not have a numerical value therefore the volume of the new sphere will be given by again the formula is 4 by 3 pi into radius cube so using the radius 4 by 3 pi r dash cubed this is the second result that i have this is the volume of new sphere and from the note what we have these two quantities are equal 
so we get volume of 27 solid iron spheres equal to volume of new sphere let's use the values the answer for this from here is 36 pi r cube and for this side the answer is from here the one marked with double star 4 by 3 pi r dash cube now solve this and simplify as much as you can so pi gets cancelled from both sides taking these numbers to the right hand side 36 multiplied by 3 by 4 r cube equals to r dash cube now the purpose of doing this is because in first part i have to find r dash so i want to obtain the value of r dash so i'm taking all values to other side keeping r dash on the other side so from here r dash cube comes out to be 27 r cube and how do we solve a cube by taking cube root on the other side this is not square root this is cube root and the cube root is calculated using prime factorization or you could do this orally the cube root for 27 is 3 and the cube root of r cube will be r so r dash comes out to be 3 r so this is the answer for the first part now let us revise once again the concept used in this question is some solid objects have been melted together and a new solid has been formed so what will happen the solids which have been melted together those are those spheres these solids have been melted so their volume gets combined and the combined volume becomes the volume of the new sphere formed so using this relation we have formed this equation on left hand side i have simplified answer for the volume of 27 solid iron spheres i had simplified it already before using it in this expression same way i have calculated the volume of the new sphere since these two values are equal simplifying this i get a relation between r dash and r cube i had to find out the value of r dash and simplified answer gives me the value of r dash as 3 r for the second part of the question i have to find out the ratio of s and s dash now let us see what are these representing it's indicated in the question s is the surface area of one solid iron sphere and this is the sphere whose radius is r and s dash is the surface area of sphere the new sphere actually if you want you can write for yourself this is the surface area of new sphere and its radius is equal to r dash so now we will be applying the formula for the surface area of sphere to calculate these answers and then we will find out the ratio now the formula for the surface area of sphere is 4 pi into radius square so same will be for the second sphere 4 pi into radius square so simplifying by using the radius we don't have the numerical value we have value as a variable so i'm using as such its ratio is to be calculated with the second answer so here the value of the radius is r dash so simplifying putting these in fractional form so this is the ratio from here 4 pi 4 pi get cancelled in the numerator i get r square in the denominator i have r dash square now the value of r dash is 3 r and this was obtained in first part of the question so i am replacing r dash by 3 r 
r dash squared in place of r dash i have used 3r now simplifying r square in the denominator 9r square these get cancelled i am left with 1 over 9 so the ratio is 1 is to 9 before we proceed with the next part of the exercise let us discuss an additional question it is based on the same concept that we used in question number 9th of exercise 13.8 this is a question from your chapter assignment metallic spheres of radii 6 meters 8 meters and 10 meters respectively are melted to form a single solid sphere so there are three metallic spheres the radius of the first is 6 meters second has a radius 8 meters and the third one has radius 10 meters these three spheres have been melted and used to form a new solid sphere so what will happen the volume of these three spheres combined will be equal to the volume of the new solid sphere you have to find out the radius of the resulting sphere so what we are going to use here is this is kind of hint i would say volume of three solid spheres these three the ones with the radii 6 8 and 10 meters their volumes combined will give you the volume of new sphere so this is the concept we will be using to solve this question now you can make an equation directly using this or you can first find out the combined volume of the solid spheres then find the volume of the new sphere and then make an equation it's up to you i'm doing it step by step step by step so for the first sphere the radius is 6 meters therefore the volume because it's first sphere I'm representing the volume by V1 this is equal to 4 by 3 pi radius cube so this will be 4 by 3 pi into 6 cube i'm not solving it i'll leave it as such i'll see later on if i require to simplify this similarly i'll calculate for the second and the third sphere so i've calculated the volume of second sphere and the third sphere exactly the way i did for the first one radius of the second sphere is 8 meters volume represented by v 2 for second sphere is 4 by 3 pi radius cubed radius is 8 I have not simplified it again like first one then the third sphere the radius is 10 the volume is represented by V for the third sphere I'm using V3 4 by 3 pi radius cubes so the radius is 10 so again leaving it as such along with the volume of these three spheres I require the volume of the new sphere before I use this equation so let us find the volume of the new sphere as well for the new sphere since i have not been given the radius so let the radius be x therefore the volume v will be equal to 4 by 3 pi into radius cube this will be 4 by 3 pi into x cube now when i have the volume of the three spheres which have been melted together to form a new sphere i have the volume for all of these i am going to use the relation that i have volume of the solids which were melted combined volume equals to the volume of the new sphere using the hint that i had given three solid spheres were melted to form new sphere so the solids which were melted their combined volume if you want you can write down combined volume of three solid spheres will be equal to volume of new sphere 
so the volume for the first sphere is v1 for the second is v2 and the third is v3 this is equal to v the volume of the new sphere i have calculated all of these let us use the values this is 4 by 3 pi into 6 cube plus 4 by 3 pi into 8 cube plus 4 by 3 pi into 10 cube on right hand side i have 4 by 3 pi x cube on left hand side it's addition so i can take this common factor inside the brackets i'll be left with 6 cube plus 8 cube plus 10 cube and on right hand side i have 4 by 3 pi x cube so 4 by 3 4 by 3 pi and pi they get cancelled so x cube comes out to be simplifying this this will be 216 plus 512 plus 1000 so x cube comes out to be 1728 x from here will be cube root of 1728 solve the cube root to solve the cube root you have to prime factorize 1728 arrange the factors into triplets groups of three and then each of those groups gives you one factor from there you can find out the cube root so this comes out to be 12 you probably have learnt this by heart 12 cube is 1728 so cube root of this number will be 12 and x represents the radius of the new sphere so the radius of new sphere will be equal to 12 meters let's do the last question of the exercise a capsule of medicine is in the shape of a sphere of diameter 3.5 millimeters how much medicine in millimeter cube is needed to fill this capsule so we have a sphere whose diameter is given so we can find the radius you have to find out the amount of medicine inside that capsule so we are going to find out the volume of that sphere let's find out the diameter is 3.5 millimeters you can also look at the clue they are asking how much medicine in cubic millimeters so when they are asking for an answer in cubic units cubic units will be obtained if you find the volume so that gives you a clue here the answer will be in millimeter cube only if you find out the volume here so diameter is this from here the radius will be half the diameter so this will be in simplified form 7 by 4 millimeters the volume of sphere will be equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube let's use the values radius cubed so 7 by 4 multiplied by 7 by 4 multiplied by 7 by 4 simplifying so you get 22 multiplied by 49 in the denominator you have 48 simplifying this you can express your answer in the form of a fraction or you can give the answer in a decimal number let's simplify these can be cancelled by 2 so we get 539 divided by 24 millimeter cube you can leave the answer as such or if you want to express this as a decimal number the answer will be 22.458 millimeter cube approximately with this your exercise 13.8 is complete as well as the chapter